G'day, I'm Wild Willie. Welcome to another edition of Wild Willie's Wild Outdoors. Well, the weatherman uh, kind of gave us a surprise last night. We got a little bit of snow, which is nice. Still not enough to uh, get out and put on the snowshoes yet, but... And unfortunately, this won't last. Today it's minus eight. Tomorrow it goes up to plus eight in rain. Anyways, I'm out doing more exploring along the escarpment today, and we'll see what kind of trouble we can get in. So, sit back and enjoy the ride. Whew. I hate hills. Uh, because of the snow and the ground's not frozen underneath, the, uh, the leaves are slippery. So, it's making this a pain in the ass trying to get up this hill. It's uh, every time you step on a leaf and shoop, you slide your go and the ground just covered with them. It's important that when you're going uphill, especially on steep inclines, like I'm trying to get up the side of the escarpment now, it's about uh, 300 vertical feet almost. It's almost straight up, but this spot's not too bad. Important, don't try to tackle it straight on. Zigzag your way back and forth. It makes it a lot easier. It'll take longer, but you use a lot less energy and uh, you'll get up there a lot safer. I don't know if you can see that all the way down there. Try to zoom in on this little Kodak waterproof camera. It's hard to bring the good gear out when uh, the snow and the rain all the time. But uh, the wind's coming from the uh, from the southwest which is in that direction and I'm not gonna get up on those ridges. It's too bloody cold so I'm gonna stay kind of in between here. I found a nice little spot under a tree. As far as getting all the way up top to do some exploring, well, that ain't, you know what, that ain't gonna happen today. It's just, uh, it's too steep. It's almost vertical at spots up there. And I'm not trusting the ground. I'm just slipping and sliding all over, so I ain't gonna bother doing that today. So I'm gonna set up base camp here. And, uh, well, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, get something to eat and make some tea. And then we'll go from there. Well, why not use toilet paper? You should have it in your kit anyways. Just an added bonus saves me from running around trying to find some uh, birch bark or some really good dry tinder. That's a good start up, so I'll use it. Well, I decided to stop here only because I was sweating like crazy. It's, uh, it's one thing you gotta watch out, especially this time of year when it's in negative temperatures. Sweat will kill. That's why it's important to dress in layers and be able to vent proper. I mean, my coat's got uh, the flaps that unzip under the arms. That helps a lot, but I was just dripping sweat. I had to take everything off and air dry. It's uh, Sweat will kill you this time of year because as soon as you stop and you sweat, that's when the cold gets right to you. Hypothermia is, uh, is a big concern when you're out like this. Pushing yourself and uh, sweating doesn't do any good. So I had to watch that. One of the things uh, we forget to pack all the time, or I forget to pack anyway, especially in the winter time when it's cloudy, is uh, these, the sunglasses. I mean, uh, I try to, you know, I, I get very apprehensive when I don't bring some sort of sunglass or fi uh, safety glass with me. I mean, everything you do out here, I mean, it's so easy to get your eyes injured, whether it be, uh, you know, walking by at night, getting a branch in the face, or uh, even uh, breaking up wood like I was just doing earlier there. It's easy to do, and uh, you can handle most injuries, but an eye injury can really uh, really affect you, especially if you're back in the middle of nowhere. Not only that, but on a day like today, it's overcast right now, but uh, the sun will be out later, so they say. And, uh, and snow blindness. I've uh, had snow blindness a couple times. It's not a, not a pleasant thing to have. 
it doesn't even have to be sunny it can be overcast uh, what, what snow blindness is it's, uh, it's a concentration of the sun rays uh, reflecting off the snow or the ice or even the water and it starts out your eyes will get a little bit uh, irritated a lot of blinking and squinting going on and, and sensitive to light and then next thing you know you got a red uh, a red glow in your eye like you, you're seeing a red tinge to everything and after that it feels like if you don't treat it it feels like it's uh, someone's poured a bucket of sand in your eyes and the more you rub the worse it gets uh, and unfortunately the only uh, the only treatment for it is uh, sitting in a dark room with the blindfold on it'll correct itself over time but uh, it does take a while and when it is correcting it's very very painful uh, if you're gonna put a blindfold on and uh, you stay away from the light I suggest uh, putting a damp cloth on it too or wetting the blindfold cool press uh, because it's gonna hurt like hell snow blindness is uh, you don't even notice it half the time until you get out of the sun or out of the uh, out of the outside and then it hits you and you're screwed especially if you're out doing an overnight pack or a two-day or three-day pack in the winter time you don't want to get snow blindness out this time of year um, another thing you can do if you don't have sunglasses is you can do like uh, you'll see like the ball players do in baseball and stuff uh, or the football players how they put the black uh, black mark under their eyes it helps uh, redirect some of the, the light rays I mean if you don't have uh, obviously no one carries around uh, black paint with them face paint but uh, charcoal does the same thing you can uh, get a couple pieces of charcoal after you fire and put it under your eyes it'll work just as good or um, some cultures, uh, especially in the far north, they'll use uh, they use bark or a shirt or, or skin of some sort and just wrap it around your face and just cut two little eye slits out and that'll help a lot too. Or even if you had a t-shirt or a bandana, put that over your face, the darker the color the better and just put enough slits for you to see. It works and uh, it can save your vision and there's nothing worse than losing your vision out in a place like this. So just something to think about. Something I've really been keen on lately is uh, making oil lamps. I do have a few actually proper ones, but uh, I've been making a lot at home. They're great. Like I said, I burn them every night. It saves on the hydro, and also they're a great confidence booster when the, uh, the power does go out or when you need them. They're very easy to make. I mean, go online. You see all kinds of, kinds of ways to do it. You need a basically almost any container, almost any oil-based fuel source, and a wick that will absorb the oil. They're real easy to make and it's something that uh, I'm glad I have just in case. Uh, I have maybe half a dozen. I don't think you can have too many and uh, they're really great to have around just in case you need it. Well, I think I'm going to sit back and enjoy the fire. Got a nice place to rest my butt, keep it dry, and I got a nice creek way down there in the valley with a nice sound of running water. So I think I'm going to call it a day, enjoy the fire, maybe make something to eat now and then start to head back. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this little adventure on Wild Willie's Wild Outdoors, and I'm signing off for now, but remember, keep your head up in the bush, you never know what you're going to see.